So in today's video, I'll show you how to paint a bunch of different ocean animals like whales and dolphins, and we're going to use them to create a poster design like this. As usual, you can find a list of all the brushes and textures I'm using for this in the description below, along with a free download of the sketch so you can follow along with me. And I'm going to start by painting the blue whale first. So for that, I'm going to grab the abstract round brush, a pretty kind of bluish gray tone like that, something in the middle. And for pretty much all the whales, I'm going to do a stroke based tail. So I just start with light pressure, press a little bit harder and then fade it off. And now for the whole body of the whale, I'm just going to fill it in as best as I can. And it's going to take a couple strokes to do this. I'll try to stay within the lines kind of as well as I can, but I'm not afraid to go over the edge because I can fix it later on. And this might be a little bit too gray. So I'll choose a slightly bluer tone there and go over it again, but just in a couple places. Now for the fin here, I'm going to grab the eraser brush set to the fine liner pen and I'm going to erase it where it connects to the body. And then I'll go back to my abstract round brush. I'll choose a slightly darker bluish gray tone and do a stroke based fin just like I did for the tail. And normally this creates a little bit of a gap or a mistake on the edge there, but I think this is nice because it gives it contrast. Now you can see there's a couple areas I need to kind of uh, erase back to match the sketch, but I'll do that a little bit later on. I want to work on adding some more texture to this first. So for that, I'm going to choose pure white. I'm going to change my brush to a default procreate brush down here in the charcoals tab. It's called burnt tree. I'm going to make a layer above my blue whale. And I'm just going to go over this pretty much randomly. And of course, this is too strong just by default. So I'm going to lower the opacity to lighten it. There we go. And I think I also want to add some kind of speckles as well. So I'll make another new layer. This time I'll choose a bright blue tone. I'll change my brush back to the watercolor brushes. And at the very top, there's the stippling brush. And I'll use that at a pretty large size. Now for these dots, I want to change that layer to multiply and you'll see how it changes them. So here are the dots. And if I change it to multiply, it makes them look a little bit darker and richer. And I think I might lighten it just a little bit. Now for the bottom here of the lower jaw and the belly, I want to add a linear texture. So I'll make another new blank layer. I'll choose a very light bluish gray tone. And this time I'm going to change my brush to the hard edge brush. And if I use this at a big size, the brush is very like opaque and solid, almost like the fine liner pen. But if I shrink the size quite small and I just press really hard, you can see it's much more kind of faded and transparent. And I think this is critical to get this overlapping effect we need to make here. So I'm going to use this brush. Uh, pressing pretty hard and I'm just going to go back and forth not in one stroke but in kind of individual discrete strokes just overlapping like this. There we go and I'll continue the effect here along the belly. And I did this uh, kind of effect here on its own layer because I need to uh, erase it back so it matches the sketch. So I'm going to grab the eraser set to the fine liner pen and I'm just going to go all along the edge and correct it. And once all the textures are pretty much finished, I'm going to move on and start adding some details like the mouth and the eye. And the mouth is pretty easy. I'm going to do it on its own layer. For the color, just a kind of dark gray tone, something a little bit darker than the body color. For the brush, I'm going to use the fine liner pen and I'll just pencil it on. And for the eye, I want to do it on its own layer as well because I want to be able to move it around and reposition it. And it's super easy. Usually for whales or elephants, I do something I call a Buddha eye. So first I use a kind of light gray tone and I draw an oval shape. Then I'll use a darker gray and I'll do a shape kind of like this. Then a sort of semicircle arc on the bottom. Then I'll choose a very, very light gray. I'll do another oval in there. And you can see the sketch is overlapping a bit. So I'll hide the sketch so we can see what we're doing here. And after that, I'll use a dark color for the pupil. And I'll do a pretty big circular pupil like that. And again, the eyes on its own layer so I can move it around. So 
I'll just play with the position here and just see what kind of feels right. I think that looks pretty good. Now once all the washes and textures and details are finished for the whale, I'm gonna merge everything onto one layer. Then I'm gonna grab my eraser brush and I'm gonna use it to clean up some of these areas that I definitely uh, missed before. I think that's pretty good. And at this point, I like to move on to doing the shading, which is basically the final step for each whale. And on the face, it's a little bit tricky, but the body shading is really easy. So for the face, I like to do a shadow on the lips. So I'm gonna use the freehand selection tool and I'm gonna make a kind of a funny shape selection like this that goes back and then reconnects. I'm gonna feather it out and I wanna brighten this area of the whale to make it look lighter. Now I'm not gonna use the brightness slider. I'm gonna do all the shading and highlighting with the curves tool. And if you wanna brighten something, you just bring this bottom node up and if you want to darken it, you bring it over here to the right. So for the upper lip, I'm going to darken it a little bit by bringing it towards the right. Now for the bottom lip, I'm going to make a similar kind of shaped selection, but this time I'm going to lighten it by dragging this node up. Now around the eye here, I think it's important to darken the top of it and lighten the bottom. So I'll do that. Now for the overall body shading, the first thing I like to do is add a kind of burn uh, kind of shadow along the edges. So for that, I'm gonna use the automatic selection tool. I'm gonna go and select the white area out here, making sure I'm not selecting the whale at all. Then I'm gonna feather out that selection. So it kind of impinges uh, on the silhouette of the whale just a little bit. There we go. Then I'm gonna go to my curves again and I wanna darken it. So I'm gonna drag this node over to the right. And you can see it gives it a kind of burned edge effect. That is way too strong. So I think I'll set it uh, kind of in this area. And to finish up the shading, I'm gonna go all over it and shade the whole body a lot like how we did the face, just using the freehand selection tool, feathering it out, and then brightening it or darkening it. Just keep in mind that this is a kind of three-dimensional cylinder-shaped animal with smooth skin. So it's probably gonna have highlights along the body length and generally towards the bottom of the body, it's gonna get a little bit darker. And once our blue whale is done, I'm gonna turn the sketch back on, make a new layer, and I'll start on the gray whale. This time I'm gonna choose a warm gray tone, but still something pretty dark. Again, I'll use the abstract round, and I'll do the tail first as a stroke-based tail. And then I'll go and fill out the whole body in a bunch of small strokes. Once the body's filled in, I'll grab the eraser brush and I'll clear out a space for the fin here. Then again, I'll use the abstract round to do a stroke-based fin. Now for the pattern on this gray whale, I'm just gonna do a bunch of speckles. So I'll make a new layer. I'm gonna change my brush again to the stippling brush. And I'm gonna use a variety of light and dark warm gray tones to add speckles all over this guy. After that, I'm gonna grab the eraser brush and clean up these speckles. Now for the mouth on the gray whale, you can just barely see it here. I'm gonna do that on its own layer. I'm gonna use pure white and I'm gonna go back to the uh, fine liner pen. And I'm basically, it's really hard to see it here. I'm basically just gonna go along it here on one side and then I'll double back and go back again. There we go. Then I'm gonna go to my adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'll blur this just a little bit. Now I did it on its own layer so I can control the opacity. So I'm gonna lighten it just a little bit. Then I'll make another layer above that. I'll choose black, fine liner pen, and I'll go just down the middle of it. And I missed the sketch a little bit, but I think it's still okay. And after that, I'll do the eye, just like I did on the blue whale. Don't forget to put it on its own blank layer. And I'm just gonna do it just like I did using the uh, fine liner pen. And once all the textures and details are finished, I'll merge all the gray whale layers together onto one. And this is optional, but if you wanna try it, I think it can have a, uh, a nice effect here. I'm gonna use the liquify tool, set to push, you can copy these settings, but if I use this at a pretty big size, 
I can actually really change the character and expression on the face here. Sometimes with uh, whales and animals in general, it's hard to get it right. So I'm gonna play with it and try to make him look kind of uh, a little bit smiling. And once that's done, I'm gonna use the freehand selection tool just like I did before to do all the shading on the gray whale, except this time I don't need to shade around the mouth and the lips because I think it already has enough detail there. Now the gray whale could be done, but I wanna show you how to add barnacles to the skin. And I'm gonna do those barnacles on their own blank layer. I'm gonna choose a very, very light warm gray color, fine liner pen, and I'm just gonna scribble on in a few places where I think those barnacles might be growing. Then I'll choose a slightly darker version of that color, and I'll dot it on. Then I'll use almost pure white and dot that on as well. Then I'm gonna use a very dark gray color, almost black, and a pretty small brush size. And I'm gonna go along all the borders of them and do a sort of bumpy black line. And then the last thing I'll do is use a slightly lighter version of that dark tone and I'll add a kind of a bump texture to each one and adding barnacles to this guy does add a little bit of extra time but I think it's worth it and this effect is really cool and once our gray whale is totally finished I'll make a new layer I'll turn the sketch back on and we'll move on to painting the orca now the orca is pretty easy I'm gonna use the abstract round again and a uh, dark gray color and I'm just gonna fill in all the dark portions here of the orca. Now for the fin here, I'm gonna use the eraser to kind of clean out this area just a bit. And then I'll do another stroke based fin. Now for these white areas here, it's gonna be hard to work with it with the sketch being so dark. So I'm gonna lighten the sketch a little bit. Then I'm gonna make a new blank layer above my orca. I'll use a very, very light gray tone. Same uh, abstract round, and I'm just gonna do the edges of these white areas. Maybe a little dot up here. Then I'm gonna change to the water blender brush, and I'm gonna soften just one side of the uh, white areas. There we go. Then I'll merge the white together with the black. And that's pretty much it for the orca. I don't really wanna add any mouth details or eyes. You wouldn't really see that on an orca anyways. And once the orca is finished, I'll move on and do the sperm whale. And I'm gonna fill him in using the abstract round, just like we have done uh, so far. But I'm gonna try to be extra, extra blotchy with him. There we go, I think that looks pretty interesting. I think I'll smooth it out with the water blender. So I'll use that at a pretty big size and soften just a couple of these areas. After that, I'll grab the eraser brush. I'll fix this little nub here. I'll clean out the area for the fin. And then also, I think I need to smooth out the tail fin a little bit as well. Now for this fin, I'm gonna use a slightly darker version of that gray. I usually like it when these uh, fins kind of stand out a little bit. Abstract round and I'll do a stroke-based fin. And where it kind of connects to the body, I'm gonna use the water blender to kind of smooth out that connection. Now for the texture on the sperm whale, I want him to look pretty rough and kind of scratched up. So I'll make a new blank layer for the texture. I'm gonna start with uh, pretty much white there. And I'll go back to the uh, charcoal brushes, burnt tree. And I'm gonna add this a lot around the uh, nose here, a bit along the body, I think there we go. Then I'm gonna change my brush here to the drawing, the uh, little pine brush. And I'm gonna use that to add some kind of scratches all over him. And I think this scratchiness is a little bit too strong. So I'm gonna lower the opacity here to control that. And after that, I'll move on and I'm gonna draw the mouth and the eyes just like I did so far, but making sure they're on separate layers.
And once everything here for the sperm whale is finished, I'll merge all those layers together onto one, and I'll do the shading just like I've been doing by using the freehand selection tool. Now I think at this point, I can move on to do the uh, white-sided dolphin, which is a little bit of a challenge. So I'll make it on a blank layer. And first, I'm gonna use a very, very dark bluish tone and the abstract round at a small size to fill in all the dark areas. Then I'm gonna use a very, very light gray tone and do kind of like what we did with the orca. And I'm gonna outline the white areas. Now, if I press this brush, very soft, it covers up the dark quite well. But if I press very hard, you can see it becomes much more transparent. So what I'm gonna do now is do some stripes, pressing quite hard with this uh, light gray tone. Now for the fin, I'm gonna go back to my dark gray tone and fill that one in. After that, I'm gonna grab my water blender brush. And I'm gonna use this to soften up a couple of these gray bands but I'm gonna make sure I leave a lot of structure behind. There we go. I wanna add a little bit of a light speckly texture. So I'll use a lighter gray color and then my uh, stippling brush at a small size. And I'm just gonna do this very, very lightly. Now for the eye, it's just gonna be a black dot using the fine liner pen. And when you have a lot of different colors and textures coming together with a dolphin, which has a very smooth skin, it's hard to get right. So you'll see when I turn off the sketch, kind of the edges here of him looks a little bit too rough. So I'm gonna fix it first with the uh, eraser brush and I'll try to smooth it out as best as I can. I'm not worrying about shape. I'm just trying to get the edge texture of this to be smooth. There we go. Now to fix the shape, I'm actually gonna use the liquify tool set to push. And I'm gonna use this at a pretty small size and I'm gonna go in there and kind of bend this, especially around the head to make the shape a little bit improved. And I think that looks pretty good, especially because this is a kind of a small illustration. You won't notice some of those defects once we zoom out. And now for the last one here, it's the uh, bottlenose dolphin. I think that's the easiest one. So I'll turn the sketch back on and I'll do him on his own layer as well. It's pretty simple. I'm just gonna use a medium gray tone and the abstract round at a really small size to fill them out. After that, I'm gonna grab the water blender brush and I'll smooth out some of these strokes, especially around the head. And for the eye and the mouth, I'm just gonna use black and the fine liner pen and I'll just draw those on. And then I think for the shading, you don't have to shade it, this looks okay, but I think I do wanna add a highlight here on the top. And just for fun, I'm gonna use pure white and then one of these uh, drawing brushes here, the little pine. And I'm just gonna kind of scribble all over him just to make him a little bit more interesting. So now that all of our ocean animals are painted, I need to export them out of this watercolor texture document. So to do that, I'm just gonna go to my wrench, share, and I'm gonna export them as a PNG. And once that's saved, I need to create a regular Procreate document that's the same size as the paper I wanna print the poster out on. So for me, I'm using A4 paper. So I'm just gonna create a regular A4 size document and it's gonna be set to sRGB. You don't have to use CMY, uh, CMYK for printing. Modern printers today are really good at doing the conversion from RGB. And all I gotta do is just drop in my file. I'll center it, and then I'm gonna add my text arrangement. And I've already made it ahead of time, and if you wanna use this exact arrangement, you can also download it in the description as well. But if you're good at hand lettering, I highly recommend giving it a try, because I think that's a really nice look for this type of illustration. And just like that, our poster is all done. This is definitely a longer kind of tutorial video than what I usually do, but if you enjoyed the format and you think I've earned it, please give this video a like. If you want to paint more watercolor ocean animals, I recommend watching one of these videos next.